Hello there. I'm Lawrence, a librarian from LA County Library. In this video, I will be introducing our Catapult Challenge program. We'll learn what a catapult is, its uses throughout history, and a bit about how it works through physics. Then we'll create our own catapult that will launch our projectiles to the moon, or at least to the other side of the table. A catapult, as defined by the Encyclopedia Britannica, is a mechanism for forcefully propelling stones, spears, and other projectiles in use mainly as a military weapon since ancient times. There are many different types of catapults, ranging from small ballista, able to be operated by an individual, to enormous trebuchet, which will require a team of operators to function. Catapults mainly operated through the sudden release of a bent wooden beam and complementary torsion in twisted thick cords of either animal hair or sinew. It operates on the principle that energy can be converted and transferred from one object to another. When a catapult is prepared, with the throwing arm drawn and the sinews tightened, massive amounts of potential energy is stored within the device. Now, When the operator releases the arm, the potential energy is unleashed and converted into kinetic energy, which transfers to the missile as the throwing arm hits its limit, hurling the missile through the air to transfer its force against a fortified wall or building. While there are many different types of catapults, such as the bolt throwing scorpion or the massive mangonel, we will be focusing on the onager, which is what people traditionally imagine when they think about catapults, and is the inspiration for our activity. Funny story, the onager is also the name of a type of wild donkey, and the Romans named their catapult after it due to its kick when fired, which they thought resembled the donkeys. Catapults have been around for a long time. They first appear in recorded history around the 4th and 5th centuries BCE in the records of ancient Greece, India, and China, and may have been invented separately by these three civilizations, probably as a solution to besieging fortified settlements. Their use soon became widespread amongst the civilizations of Europe and Asia. In Europe, the catapult and other siege engines became incorporated into standard military doctrine and tactics with the Greeks, the Hellenistic successor states, and most famously, the Romans. The Roman use of catapults as an important part of their military tactics was a very common occurrence during both the Republican and Imperial periods. The Romans were masters of siege craft and heavily employed the use of siege engines such as battering rams, siege towers, and of course, catapults during their campaigns against other peoples. Such was their importance that they are referenced by major historical figures and works of art. In his commentaries, Julius Caesar himself praises the accuracy of the scorpion, a type of catapult which he employed to great effect against the Gauls and the Britons. Trajan's Column, a fantastically detailed work of art which narrates the Emperor Trajan's victory over the Dacians, has a scene featuring a siege which depicts Roman soldiers operating a catapult, in this case, another scorpion. One of the most famous Roman campaigns culminated in the siege of Jerusalem in 70 CE, which lasted more than four months and featured extensive use of siege works and siege engines, such as catapults, to bring down the city's fortifications. The importance of the siege engines during this campaign was emphasized with this painting entitled Catapulta by English painter Edward Poynter, which depicts a catapult with its arm being drawn back while under the cover of a siege tower. Now, catapult technology probably reached its zenith in Europe during the Middle Ages, as they were necessary to break down the fortifications of the increasingly imposing castles and towers which dotted the European landscape. Leonardo da Vinci, the famous Italian scientist and inventor in the Renaissance, even drew up plans for an improved catapult which featured an increased throwing force and rate of fire. But by this time, gunpowder weapons, especially the cannon, had emerged as a viable military technology, and the catapult gradually began to be phased out in favor of this more powerful alternative, 
all but disappearing from mainstream military use by the 17th century CE, and can now only be found in museums, film and media, and, in a short while, your own desk. Alright, so before we jump into building a catapult, I want to remind you to be safe. Please do not use projectiles, which can potentially hurt someone, which means anything that is sharp or made of stone, metal, or glass. Do not aim and launch projectiles at another person or living thing, such as pets, as projectiles can hurt. And make sure you're in a safe environment where nothing can fall on you if a projectile hits it. That being said, let's start our activity. Here are the materials we will use. We have small craft sticks, large craft sticks, a cupcake holder I glued to the end of a large craft stick, rubber bands, and some pom-poms as projectiles. It's okay to use a plastic spoon in place of the cupcake holder. You'll just need to secure it to the end of the large craft stick with another rubber band. First, I'm going to take the small craft sticks and stack them together. Then use two rubber bands to tie them together at each end. Next, take the two large craft sticks and place one over the other. Then use another rubber band to tie them together on one end. Now I'm going to take the bundle of small craft sticks and put them in between the two large craft sticks as far as it can go towards the secured end. Then take another rubber band and tie a bundle of sticks together with the two larger pieces. It's a little tricky, but try to tie it like an X. Now it's ready for action. We can test it out by putting our projectiles inside, draw back the stick with the launcher, and let it fly. Alright, and that concludes our video. I hope you had a smashing good time. If you are interested in more of our videos and programs, please visit us at lacountylibrary.org and please remember to complete the short survey at the end of this video. Until next time, Thank you.